Hello everybody, I am Prabhneet Kaur and I welcome you all on behalf of CSIR ITIB Pulse. Today we have Dr. Sheetal Karnutra, faculty at CSIR ITIB with us to discuss about tuberculosis. We welcome you. So we would like to start asking you a question about how, what, what motivated you in the research of tuberculosis and like what, what led you to take this as your field uh, for your career. So as a child, uh, I was facing a lot of allergies and I had always been intrigued by why is it happening to me and what is the cause for uh, all of this. So I had a natural um, drive towards immunology and while studying immunology, I also became interested in pathogens um, because that is what drives a lot of the immune responses. So um, in my master's, I had wonderful teachers and uh, it was basically their influence uh, that led me to think about tuberculosis. And uh, that's what I ended up studying for my PhD as well. And as I was finishing my PhD, I wanted to do something different. And uh, I that switched fields at that point and started understanding how lipids are stored in adipose tissue. And uh, that, that was a completely different field of insulin resistance and uh, lipodystrophy. And then it was a concerted effort in marrying the two fields that uh, I knew. And uh, it so turns out that in TB, lipid metabolism plays a very important role, both from the perspective of host and the pathogen. And that's what my lab studies right now. But uh, tuberculosis has been with us uh, for so long. And there are so many unanswered questions still. And I think that's what drives me to sort of come up with new answers using the tools that I have. It's great to know that you have been working with the field of tuberculosis since your like, PhD. Uh, can you please tell us about the challenges uh, like in the field of tuberculosis? What all are the challenges in research and in general? So uh, research in TB has its own challenges because unlike E. coli, which you get a colony in 16 hours, it takes about 21 days to get a colony for mycobacterium tuberculosis. You also require specialized facilities. Doing uh, studies, especially infection studies in these settings, are very challenging. Um, besides that, you also have the challenge of tuberculosis as a burden to the healthcare system and to society. So the challenges there uh, that are really not met with the current uh, status of uh, uh, you know, technology that we have is one diagnosis. So when you talk about pulmonary tuberculosis, it's easier because you can, and especially in adults, where you can get enough bacteria in the sputum to have a uh, real, uh, a, a true diagnostic uh, positive. But in case of um, children and also in case of extra pulmonary TB, you can, um, you, you are limited by whether you can detect the bacteria or not. So many extra pulmonary TB, um, incidences are passive which means you can't detect the bacteria by, by smear microscopy or even by molecular te uh, tests. So yes, that is a ma major challenge. Another challenge that we have with TB is the uh, morbidity associated with the disease. So yes, you can treat TB in most cases with the frontline the, um, antibiotics that you have, but, <coughs> excuse me, but one of the problems is that uh, TB also causes a lot of damage to the host tissue. So, for example, an individual who has been treated for TB uh, successfully still has very high risk of having low lung function for the rest of their life. So, treating the host tissue, the inflammation that TB is causing, is also very important. So, so as we know that in case of most of the diseases, there are some myths and misconceptions that always stay stuck to it, like always like hampering the uh, true awareness about the disease, which can help us control the spread and everything. So do you find something that you really like to share with us since you're an expert and one of the experts in the field? Uh, some kind of myths and misconceptions that you really like to burst uh, with the field of tuberculosis. Right, so one of the uh, sociologically relevant myths is that TB is a disease of the poor. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is a disease of the poor, but that doesn't mean that uh, individuals who have, uh, you know, a lot of privilege are not likely to get the infection. 
things like malnutrition, things like smoking, crowded spaces, um, diabetes, all of these put you at high risk for acquiring uh, and presenting with active TB. So that's one of the myths, I think, um, in the country um, and globally, perhaps. Um, another myth associated with TB research. I wouldn't say a myth, really, but uh, it's really a misconception that I see amongst uh, people who are new to the field, especially, is that uh, latent TB and dormant bacteria. So latency is not the same as a condition with dormant bacteria. Latent TB is what most of us probably have, which is we have bacteria inside us, but we're not presenting with active disease. Okay? And it's loosely stated that one third of the uh, world population is latently infected with TB. Okay? So, but that doesn't mean that the bacteria we harbor are dormant. They could be actively replicating, but they're being controlled by the host immune system at the same time, such that we don't have a presentation of disease. So dormant bacteria is not the same as latent bacteria or latent infection. This is very important information. I think most of the audience would have been thinking it this way. So one last question we like to uh, ask. So like uh, since everybody knows that the theme for this year, it is yes, we can end TB. So do you like, uh, what do you think? Do you agree with uh, this? Like, is it achievable goal? And what is the current status globally? How are we going forward with eradicating or ending TB as a disease? So it's a uphill task. Uh, it is a real challenge because of many different facets about TB. So first of all, it's uh, largely a respiratory illness. It is spread largely by droplets. So, um, and as I said, if one third of the population is latently infected, uh, they could not be presenting with disease, but they could still be transmitting the disease, mm -hmm. right? So this is a new concept, which is called incipient TB. So you're subclinically, uh, you know, transmitting the disease as well. So with so many, um, with, with the possibility of even uh, seemingly non-infected individuals or non-active TB patients also giving rise to, um, you know, further infection spreading uh, disease, it becomes a big challenge. So yes, diagnosis is the first thing, um, but would you end up, you know, paying for uh, expensive diagnosis? for a population this large, uh, screening everyone. For pulmonary TB, it is still possible and you would start screening based on symptoms, right? And that is actively being done in the country. So that's a very good place to start off with. But I think we're far from eradicating it. So I, I, I think that's a real uphill challenge right now. There's a number of things that have been done, but yet a lot of it to be done. Right. And there, there are inherent problems with the way the nature of the disease and the nature of transmission that it becomes very difficult to achieve that goal. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.